All right, what's up, Redeemer Youth Group? Uh, I am bummed that this is not a Wednesday night or a Sunday morning where we are together and connect and can connect and hang out and uh, talk and be together. Uh, but I'm going to be uploading a video uh, every week covering some of the things um, that we were going to do together uh, on Wednesday nights or Sunday mornings um, this spring. Uh, so I'm probably going to do this for the next five or six weeks. Uh, I'm going to finish up some of the stuff we were talking about regarding Christology, the study of who Christ is and what he's done. We're going to look at the resurrection and the ascension. And then we're going to do about four weeks on how do we connect with God? How do we connect with God and have a relationship with God? Because Christianity is not just about knowing things intellectually, right? Just having intellectual understanding of theology or ideas from the Bible. It's about a living God who's alive and you're alive and it's about you having a relationship with him and knowing him personally. And so how do you connect with God? How does God connect with us? That's probably the better way to say it and ask. So we're going to look at that as well. A couple things before we get into the resurrection uh, today. High school camp, um, as you know, high school camp, uh, June 16th to 20th um, was uh, happening. We're not sure if it's happening. We don't know. Um, right now we're kind of moving forward as though it is. And so you can go to our youth page on our website, redeemerwaco.org, um, go to the youth page and register online. You don't have to pay yet. Um, it's a little up in the air, but right now it's on. Okay. June 16th to 20th. It's only 350 bucks, only $350. Okay. Um, and they have everything at this place, everything, zip lining, rock climbing, a lake, blob, pool, paintball, you name it, they got it. They have everything. It's going to be a ton of fun. So incoming ninth graders all the way through 12th grade, I want you to be there. I want to see you there. We've got a great guest speaker uh, lined up. We'll have great times of, of worship together, have a ton of fun uh, and just a great time. So go register right now. Pause the video, register on the youth page. Um, you don't have to pay just yet. It's only 350 bucks and it is still on. Okay. And um, if it gets canceled or something because of all this stuff, We'll figure out a way to do something fun. All right, sometimes for youth group, we have a bit of fun, play a game, laugh, whatever. I'm gonna do a magic trick for you guys that I learned. It's taken me, um, honestly, the past three weeks to learn this trick. So that's a number one right there. It's not like an I or an L. It's a number one. These are labeled numbers. I'm gonna flip through here. When you say stop, I'm gonna stop, and I'm gonna guess what number without looking. I'm gonna guess what number you stopped on. Uh, there's about 150. I'm going to guess what number when you say stop, uh, eyes closed. If you need to pause the video and compose yourself, do that. Ready? Make sure you say stop, okay? I flipped too fast, okay? Make sure you say stop. Right there. All right. The number you stopped on. Guys, of course I can't do this. This is a pre-recorded video. I can't hear you. If you said stop, though, thinking that I could hear you on a pre-recorded video, thinking that you were saying stop to me through a pre-recorded video speaking to the past, I need you to text me and tell me that, okay? These aren't even labeled. I can't. I'm not a magician, okay? I'm not a magician. Let's look at the resurrection. Romans chapter 6. Grab your Bible. Romans chapter 6. New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. Romans, Romans chapter six, we're going to look at the resurrection. Who cares about the resurrection? What does the resurrection mean? We talk a lot about the cross of Jesus. We talk a lot about Christ crucified, Christ dying for us. What about the resurrection? What does the resurrection mean? How should you think about the resurrection uh, personally? That's what we're going to look at in Romans chapter six. Um, there was a movie. I don't know if you saw this movie. There was a movie uh, called In Time. Uh, In Time, it was with Justin Timberlake who's, uh, let's be real, subpar actor, but uh, entertaining guy, entertaining movie, in time. The movie was set in like 2169, 2169. And when everyone, everyone on the planet, when they hit the age of 25, they stop aging. They stop aging. But when they hit 29, this uh, like uh, timer countdown starts on their arm from a year. They have a year to live. So, so once that timer hits zero, uh, they die. And um, obviously this time on their arm becomes very important and it can be traded. It can be added to. Uh, employers can pay people with time. 
And um, so in poorer parts of the country, people will have like 24 hours left to live, okay? And they'll go to work and they'll get paid with, you know, maybe another 24 hours to live or something like that. In richer areas, people will have 100 years left to live. So it's really weird plot, really interesting movie, um, uh, really interesting just story, right, idea. It seems very otherworldly. It seems like that has nothing to do with real life, but it actually has a lot more than you think. Uh, n number one, it's the idea of just death. Everyone knows they're headed to death and everyone wants to live longer. And you and I both know that 10 out of 10 people die. You and I both know that, that death is something we will, we will face um, if Jesus doesn't come back first. Um, and, and in one sense, um, you think about our hearts beating, right? Um, the average heart, the average lifespan, the heart beats about 2.9 billion times. So you know every time your heart beats, um, it, your heart's not, this heart you got ain't going to beat forever. You know, you've only got so many heartbeats. You've only got so much time, right? So kind of movies oddly more similar and has some really um, connecting points to real life. We know that death is this incredible enemy, of ours. Death takes everything, you know? Um, you could lose all of your money, but man, at least you're still alive. You could have an injury that, you know, that lasts your whole lifetime, but at least you're still alive. But death, death takes everything. It's this, it's this ultimate incredible enemy of ours. And so how do we think about death? Is there any hope for you as you think about death? That's what we're going to look at from Romans 6. Let's read it together. Um, if you haven't found it in your Bible, you can pause the video. Let's read it together. Romans 6, and we're going to start in verse 5. For if we have been united with him, speaking of Jesus, with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Verse 8. Now, if we have uh, died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. All right, we're gonna, I'm going to make a few comments about, about the, the resurrection and what the resurrection means and, and what the resurrection shows us. It's all very, very personal, but then we're going to dive into Romans 6, specifically what it says. Uh, here's the deal. Um, we just celebrated Good Friday, and um, that's insane to call that Friday, the Friday uh, on, on which Jesus died, good. How could it possibly be good? How could, how could any death? be good? How could especially the death of Jesus, the death of the God-man be good? How could that be something we celebrate? Isn't death our ultimate enemy? Doesn't death just take everything? What is good about Good Friday? Well, we know that, that resurrection follows it. You see, the resurrection of Jesus, when Jesus walks out of his tomb, it shows that his death was not a defeat. His death was not sin killing him. His death was not uh, a sin defeating him, Satan defeating him, death defeating him. His death ultimately, the resurrection shows us, was the death of the Son of God who was killing death, who was dominating sin, who was um, defeating Satan. The resurrection, when Jesus comes out of the tomb, it shows that he really is the Son of God who really just paid the price for sin, who really just accomplished victory over sin and over Satan and over death, bearing the wrath of God, receiving the judgment that we deserve, that you deserve. Not that he deserves, he was sinless and is sinless. But he who knew no sin, the Bible says, became sin so that in him we might be the righteousness of God. And so it's this exchange. Jesus takes our sin, pays the price for it, and is victorious for you and me. Now, let's look at specifically what Romans 6 also uh, says. Look at verse 5. For if we've been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We, we often talk about the death of Jesus, and rightly so. Paul said that when he was among the Corinthians, he decided to know nothing but Christ and him crucified. 
And sometimes we might think, well, what do I think about the resurrection? You know, how do I think about the resurrection? Well, Paul here says that not only through faith are you united to the death of Jesus, his payment for sin that's given to you and it's for you, but you've been united to him in his resurrection, in his new perfect life. His resurrection life is now yours through faith in him. Look at verse 6. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Here's the key in verse 8. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. So if we've died with him in a death like his on the cross, when we see him walk out of the tomb, when we read of his resurrection, we hear of his resurrection, that he rose again from the, the grave, walking out of his own tomb, we believe that through faith, we will live with him in this resurrection, that we, we have this resurrection life through faith in him. Look at verse 9. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So Jesus will never die again because in his death, as his resurrection clearly shows, he defeated death. He dominated it. He killed it. Jesus will never die again. And get this, in Jesus and through faith in Jesus, you have that resurrection life. That resurrection life that death can't touch that sin can't destroy, that Satan can't take away. This is why Jesus said, I believe this is in the Gospel of John, that though you die, you will live. He says, you'll never die. The death that, that we still have to pass through is not this ultimate final death because Jesus has, has won. He is victorious over it. And his resurrection is given to you that you would have resurrection Life And so look what he says, finally, um, kind of this summation, this, um, this great effect, how this should affect you, how you should think. Verse 11, so you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Sin doesn't have dominion over you through faith in Jesus. Uh, sin doesn't own you and therefore death doesn't own you, you've been made alive. Ephesians 2 says that though you were dead in your trespasses and sins, what? You've been made alive. You have this eternal resurrection life already because of Jesus and by and through the Holy Spirit. So listen to what 1 Corinthians 15 says, for as by a man came death by Adam, by a man, Jesus, has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. When you see, when you read of and hear the resurrection of Jesus through faith in him, you are seeing your resurrection and your life uh, that's given to you by faith. You are given a new heart that beats forever, that beats forever. And yes, we have to pass through death, but we know that there is final, ultimate resurrection to come where you and I in Christ will live forever, eternal life with God, untouched by sin, untouched by Satan, untouched by death, untouched by suffering. All of our suffering, all of our tears wiped away and done away with forever. So sin, Satan, and death can't kill you because, and I believe as Pastor Jeff said in his Easter sermon, Jesus killed death for you. Amen.